Hey everyone, Rob here again, and it's been a little while since we've done some updates on the seismic activity, volcanoes, and earthquakes here in Iceland, but there is some news over the past week or two weeks or so of activity that's increasing in Iceland. We're going to start off with a magnitude of 4.9 earthquake that occurred at, I hope I say this right, Baurtharbunga, and it was a magnitude of 4.9 which is quite high uh, and it was you know just a couple of days ago actually just about a week ago and they're saying that it occurred about five kilometers northeast of Bunga just before two o'clock and they were saying that the figures according to the meteorological agency's website said that uh, a magnitude of 4.4 earthquake occurred in sort of the area just before that as well and they've had a number of aftershocks which is expected that followed after these these bigger ones but they said that there's no signs of unrest and and so forth they also mentioned that the last earthquake of this magnitude was back in january of 2020 and before that was january of 2018 so they're saying that quakes of this magnitude of, of the ones four and larger are not in uncommon in this area and that there have been a total of 50 recorded since the eruption in trojan that ended back in february of 2015. So even though they're saying this, they're saying it's sort of business as usual. These are just normal earthquakes and seismic activity that occurs in these sort of active volcano areas. And it is not a sign that an eruption is about to start or that another major earthquake is going to happen. If you're wondering where this is, let's take a look at the map. We can see it's located in sort of that Vatniokur area, which is kind of towards the center of Iceland uh, where this pin is right here. In other news, however, we have some amazing imagery coming to us on the Askia volcano and the Icelandic Meteorological Office, they all met, let me see if I can zoom in here, if we can make this happen, they all met together uh, on Monday the 25th of July with scientists from the University of Iceland's Institute of Geoscientists together with representatives of civil protection and sort of like a huge working group and the topic of the meeting was development and all of the stuff that's been going on in Asuka in the last few months where the land changes and we've talked about this before the land changes and earthquake information uh, has been sort of being monitored over the past while now the land has risen quite a bit since last August and you can see a clear picture here uh, through one of the satellite images after the snow has melted in the area because it's of course summertime. The height of the land now measures around 35 centimeters and the center is a short distance west of Askevat. Uh, the land rise is caused by apparently an increase in pressure in the base of the volcano and the reason for this is believed to be accumulation of magma deep in the earth's crust. Now, they do say that model calculations indicate that the depth of the magma is around two kilometers and that the magma is spreading horizontally in the Earth's crust in the center of the volcano. The rate is extraordinary compared to comparable volcanoes in the world, which for me, it sounds like a cause for concern, but they're saying that seismic activity has not been high along with this, possibly because, you know, before the current rise period began, there was persistent land subside in this area in the last decade. So it's sort of balancing out perhaps. Also they're saying part of the deformation can occur on the Caledra cracks and can move partially without seismic activity. So let's take a look at where this is on the map. You can see here it's just north of the Vatniokul Park and, and Glacier. And if we sort of looking back at where all those earthquakes were occurring, it's kind of along the same line you can see here we zoom in, it's around this uh, this lake here, or this sort of crater, I guess is what it would be. So this is where the, the volcano is. Now, if we're going a little bit further, they're saying that scenarios again are unchanged, and if magma flow persists, the rising process may continue in a similar fashion for quite some time, and increased seismic activity is expected to be a clear prelude to further underground magma movements or potentially an eruption. Now, the most likely scenario in the event of an eruption is a fissure eruption in the vicinity and the measurements of volcanoes with mature crudra in the case of Askia show that there can be a large crustal movement without an eruption. So they're saying even with all of this movement uh, that amounts to more than one meter or sorry, a movement can occur 
to more than one meter before an eruption even occurs. And they're saying that it can't even be ruled out that in the case of this particular volcano, that if there is an eruption, the notice will be very short and even just a few hours if, if that. Now, they do have a uncertainty level in effect in that area. And they're obviously going to be monitoring this very, very closely uh, with the civil defense and the police, as well as the Vatnayoko National Park. Now, there is one thing that uh, is a good sort of scenario in this is that the area of this, there are very few sort of at-risk settlements. You can see it's in the middle of the country. Uh, obviously, it's always dangerous to have volcanoes, but definitely not something where you're going to risk uh, people's lives at this point in time. So another thing that's sort of popping up, it seems like all over the country, there's more and more sort of seismic activity. There has been uh, tremor increases in this one area in Krusu uh, Verkobjarki. And so, um, again, it's one of those things, if we take a look here, we can say, they're saying tens of thousands of rock, tons of rock are slowly moving and there's deep cracks formed in earthquakes in recent years and fissures opened there when the earthquakes occurred in 2020 and 2021. Earthquakes over magnitude of five were measured and, and so forth. But um, this is not quite as big of, a, of an issue in terms of the news that's coming out as this Aska volcano. And they're saying here, I mean, it's, it's woken up is what they're saying. Now, when they're looking at this, they're saying that it, it has been sort of dormant, well, asleep <laughs> for the last 50 to 60 years. And a professor of geophysics, Magnus Guzmanson, uh, said that what characterized Askia was subsidence in the last decades, but then that turned around in, the late, in late July, early August of a year ago when the land started to rise and has risen up, as I said before, very, very quickly. Uh, as I said previously, it now measures 35 centimeters in just the, the year that's passed. And of course, that's uh, something that they should or will continue to monitor. They are saying that is considering how much uplift there is, it's interesting how little seismic activity is accompanying this. And it needs a lot, needs to take in a lot before it starts to break out and have an eruption. So it could go like that. Now, Iceland is known for having an eruption every, basically every few years. So this could be the next place. There are a few other places, if you look at some of the previous videos, where an eruption could occur. But it seems like if we're looking at where things are going to happen, it seems like sort of this Vatnajökull area is where the eruption's going to occur. Now, there is silver lining to all this. If we take a look at, let me just translate this for everyone, the latest earthquake data over the past you know 48 hours or so uh, we can see it's very minimal across the whole country there's still a lot going on in the Reykjanes peninsula where we had Fagrasfet and the eruption the most recent eruption that occurred so there is still uh, a lot of activity there if we take a look zoom in here uh, we can see that there is un unrest i guess we can call it but the earthquakes and the tremors are not that big so it's uh that's the silver lining. We're going to have to wait and see. Good news is a lot of this activity is occurring in places where there are not a lot of people. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You're all up to date. I think I'm going to be tracking this and posting more videos more frequently as all of this stuff develops a little bit quicker lately. And I look forward to sharing all of the information that I find with all of you. So until next time, thank you so much for watching.